Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube. I do this so many times and I'm still not used to it and I still get up. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So just the other day I posted a story on my IG page that I wanted to know what assumptions you guys have about me. And in this video, I'm pretty much just gonna be reading through all of your assumptions and just telling you if they're true or not. Some of them made me like, and some of them were like, hmm, hmm, that's pretty true. But yeah, if you guys want to see what some of these assumptions are and know whether they are true or not, then please keep on watching. Someone had the assumption that I never had a breakout. Well, if you look here and you look somewhere here, right there, that huge ass pimple. I sure as hell do break out. I break out quite a bit actually. For the most part, I do have clear skin and I'm very fortunate. It's really honestly in my genes that I have clear skin, but occasionally I do have breakouts. When I was younger, I had no breakouts. So that assumption then would have been true, but now, I break out like crazy. I don't think there's a problem with breaking out as long as you're taking care of your skin and you know, taking the necessary steps to allow that breakout to heal or go away without picking at it and making it worse. But yes, I do break out. I don't have perfect, perfect, perfect skin. So another assumption that one of you had about me is that I am a super funny, chill and down to earth person. Honestly, I feel like that's something that I can't really say about myself. Although I'd like to think that I'm a really funny person. <laughs> and I'd like to say that I'm very chill and a very down to earth person. I feel like that's something that somebody else on the outside is gonna have to tell me because I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, I, I'd like to say that I like to crack jokes and be a funny person. I've heard that from my friends before and I'm also very down to earth. I am very chill, I'm very laid back, very relaxed. That's all I really have to say about that. There was a few of you that actually had this assumption and it's that I'm a very confident person. Yeah, I'd like to say that I am a very confident person. I wouldn't say that I've always been that way. Growing up, obviously, I feel like being a female, I there's always insecurities. I feel like they're males too. Everyone has insecurities, honestly. And growing up over time, I don't know, like maybe it's just being more comfortable with myself and just loving who I am. And just, you know, the whole concept of self-love. Like I love myself, I'm happy with who I am. And I think that just brings out confidence or show is confidence. So yeah, I'd like to say that I am a very confident person. I don't think I'm overconfident, but I'm just myself. An assumption that I do makeup and content creation full time. Yes, that is correct. I do freelance makeup, so I take clients, both non-bridal and bridal. I do that full time and I also do content creation full time. I guess I can say I focus my time on both fairly equally. Obviously, when it comes to doing clients, you do have a season or two fills with bookings and then you have your off seasons, winter for example, where you don't really have many clients. And I wanna say I'd like to focus all my time on content creation because that's honestly what I love doing. Um, I love both actually, but my long-term, short-term, whatever goal is to be a full-time content creator, not doing clients. I don't think I'm going to be doing that for my entire life. It is true. I do not have a 9-to-5 job and a regular 9-to-5 and I don't think there's a problem with that. Obviously, there are certain people who need a 9-to-5. They believe in the idea and concept of having a routine. I don't because I have had a 9-to-5 in the past and I just hate the entire concept of it. I hate the idea of working for someone and getting paid by someone to build their business. I would rather hustle and grind and try to build my own brand and my own business. So yeah. The next assumption is you are someone who is not afraid to call people out on their bullshit. P.S. I love you. I love you too. I'd like to say for the most part that is correct. I am not afraid to state my opinion and tell somebody when they're doing something wrong or something that's morally incorrect, I don't know. Like, I'm not afraid to do that because I'm not the type of person to call someone out and just be upset about it or be upset with them. I'd like to help them understand another perspective and it's like, it's 
kind of like that. It's like helping them grow. Same thing with me. Like if you're my friend and you know me and you think that I'm doing something wrong, I expect you to call me out on my shit because I want to be a good person. And if I'm doing something that's wrong, that's going to hurt somebody else or anything like that, I want to know and I want to be able to fix that. So that's what I do for other people. So yes, I do call people out, but obviously there are situations where it might just be a very dramatic situation and very drama filled in those kind of situations. I'm not going to name anything, but I would probably just keep my mouth shut because I don't want to be involved in no type of drama. This one was so funny. I had two, two people. You are a bad ass bitch. And somebody else said you were the baddest baddie in school. I don't know what the hell baddest baddie means. I was a very normal kid in school. I went to school to study. I went to school to pass and ace my exams. I went to school to play sports. I went to school to dance. Those are the only reasons that I went to school. Also, I went to school because I like to socialize. I love socializing. I love my friends and I'm an extrovert. That's literally all I went to school for. I don't know what baddest baddie means. I don't know. I did nothing bad in school. I, yeah, no, I was a pretty normal kid. Someone said you are intimidating. Okay, so I've had this come up so many times with people. Like people come at me and say, oh my God, you're so intimidating at first. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the way I look on the outside. Like sometimes I can have like resting bitch face and I don't mean to have resting bitch face, but I do sometimes. I do my best nowadays when I'm in public. If I make eye contact with somebody, whether I know them or not, I'm smiling because a smile to somebody can change their day. But no, I, I, I don't think I'm intimidating. I don't want to come off that way but I have heard that quite often in the past maybe it's because I'm a very loud personality I am a very very loud person so that can come off very intimidating so yeah I, I hope I'm not intimidating to some people a few of you guys assumed that I am engaged and ew, I am not engaged. I don't think I will be getting married anytime soon either. There is no ring on my finger. But no, I am not engaged. I feel like I would share it on my social media if I was engaged. So don't worry guys, if I do get engaged, if I do get married or anything like that, you guys will know. But no, I am not engaged. Nadine, don't, don't feel pressure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Am I? Am I? Going along with that question, somebody said you are not planning on getting married to Nadoon anytime soon and you are not close with your future in-laws. The first half is correct. We don't plan to get married anytime soon. Honestly, I want to take my sweet ass time. Me and Nadoon talk about this all the time. Like I am 27 and he's 26 turning 27 soon and I'm not saying that's the time to get married whatever but you do see a lot of people in our age group getting married and taking that next step which is great they're ready i'm not nadun is not either we always talk about it we have so many goals for our, our our lives we want to do so many other things before taking that step and putting a large amount of money into a wedding we have so many goals with regards to our careers we're both very career oriented we both want to be able to take care of our families we both want to fulfill a lot of our dreams outside of a wedding i'd rather take fifty thousand dollars and invest it in my business or invest it in property or other things. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm not getting married anytime soon. The second half, I'm not close with my in-laws, my future in-laws. That is false. I am very close to my future in-laws. I love Nadun's family. I love his sister. We're like best friends. And his mom is like my best friend too. And so it's his dad. So we're really close. Oh, here's a good one. Someone's assumption was that I am a very tall person. And you are correct. I'd like to consider consider myself very tall. I am almost 5'8". I'm just shy of it. To be exact, I'm 5'7 and 3 quarters. I think I said that in another video. But yeah, I'd consider that to be fairly tall for a female. It's actually kind of weird. Like, I've been tall all my life after, I want to say like grade 2, grade 3, I was like somewhat a medium height. And then I just like had some serious like growth spurt. And I was always in like the back row for all of my picture days for our class picture. It's kind of weird. Like, I feel... Like I went through like a phase, like a short phase where I wouldn't say insecure, but I felt like, oh, I wish I was like just a few inches shorter because I love wearing high heels, like high, high heels, like three to four inch heels I love wearing. And I always hated wearing heels like with my friends because some of my friends are, they short, they're like shorties, but not, not, I'm not dissing. I don't think there's anything wrong with being short, but like I hated towering over people, but now, yo. 
uh, I, I don't even care. I, Nadoon's also 6'4 and 3 quarters or something like that, but I could wear heels and I still look short next to him. So yeah, I wear heels wherever I go, even though they kill my feet. I still wear them. Oh, someone said you're 5'9 and about 58 kilograms. No, I'm not 5'9. I am 5'7 and 3 quarters as I mentioned. 58 kilograms? How many, how many pounds is that? Let me check, let me check, let me check. Oh my god, that's actually somewhat accurate. Um, I think I'm more closer to 60 kilograms. Honestly, my weight has been fluctuating the last like three weeks because I was working out and I stopped and then this whole quarantining thing happened and yeah, your girl has not been working out. But I'm also not eating that bad. But I'm about 60 kilograms. 60 plus a little bit. I want to say I range between in terms of my weight. I don't even know why I'm sharing my weight, but I don't really care. I fluctuate between 132 and 139. That's seven pounds. That's, that's a huge difference. My goal weight is 130. I want to stay around there and yeah. Somebody assumed that I don't have a university degree. I actually graduated from university. I went to Wilfrid Laurier University in Waterloo and I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts Honors degree in kinesiology and I also minored in psychology. So I do have a degree and yeah, it has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now, which is absolutely fine. I really, I, I do believe, I honestly believe that I had to go through that. I had to go through school school and I had to rack up a $40,000 debt in OSAP to realize that nope, that's not what I want to do. I want to do this and this is what I'm going to do and I don't even care about my OSAP debt because you know what? I'm pushing myself to get to a point where I can pay my OSAP in one payment. So I will get to that. You are a very strong minded person. Yeah, I would like to say that I am, I guess, what does that mean? What does it mean to have a strong mind? like being a strong person, like I don't know, like any sort of hardships that I face in life. I'm not saying things can be easy. I do have the ability to look at a situation, whether it's positive or negative and grow from it, I guess I can say. That's obviously some a skill or something that I've learned to do over the years just by, you know, like seeing other people in my life who are like that or just like, you know, listening to podcasts that are very motivational or reading books even. Reading books have helped me on another level to like, you know, have a, a much more healthier mental health and just be be a much stronger person. But yeah, for the most part, I'd like to say that I'm a fairly strong person. I've had moments where I've felt weak, but I think that's normal. I think that's human nature to be vulnerable and that's completely okay if you feel like that. But I guess what's important is that you don't live in that bubble of just feeling down and feeling negative and feeling weak and feeling vulnerable. You shouldn't stay there. You should find ways to get out of that and just, you know, reach your fullest potential. This is so funny. I don't know what it is. Every Every time I share something new on my Instagram that like, you know, like whether, like just like last week I shared a dance video and like I got a lot of feedback, positive feedback, which I'm super grateful for. I had a lot of you guys ask me what am I not good at. Let me tell you something. I am not good at a lot of things. Oh, one of them being singing. I can't sing for shit. I also am not the best cook. So yeah, if y'all have any cooking recipes, to help your girl out, let me know. But no, I'm not good at everything. There's obviously things that I enjoy that I honestly just make me happy, whether that's doing makeup or dancing or playing sports. Like those are all things that I've been doing ever since I was very, very young, which is why I've, I guess, built some sort of skill set around those things. But um, no, I'm not good at everything. I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I can't do. So, I mean, that's very sweet for some of you guys to say, but not good at everything, trust me. So another assumption was that I have always had long hair. Yes, for the most part, yes. There was one year I lost my mind in first year university and I cut my hair. I chopped my hair to here. Oh my God, I look like a child. I had short hair. I don't know why I cut it. I love long hair. I don't think I would ever cut my hair short again unless like, you know, maybe later in the future if I feel like I can't manage it. But no, I love hair. I love styling my hair. I know y'all are probably like, what is she talking about? She always has her hair in a bun or like a top knot or whatever. But when I go out and things like that, I don't know, I just like long hair. So I have a thing. I've also never dyed my hair. I love black hair too, so yeah. You are not connected with the Tamil culture with the exception of attire. I think I might disagree. I don't know what that means, like being tied to my culture. I love Tamil food. Like I think food is a huge part of culture. I eat Tamil food every single day. So yes, in that way I am very tied to it. I obviously dress very culturally whenever I'm going out and I even also put a lot of looks on my Instagram page. I don't know, what else, what else is a part of your culture? Oh no, I love watching Tamil cinema, movies, music, like 
I think I'm very tied to it in a way. I also speak the language uh, very fluently, I would like to say. I don't know if it sounds like the best Tamil or anything like that. Like I've been judged for my Tamil. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, I think I'm pretty tied to my culture, I'd like to say. <sighs> Somebody assumed Nidun was your first love. This is an interesting question. I, uh, he's not my first relationship, so in that sense I wouldn't say he was my first love, I guess. I feel like there's phases of love. Like, you know when you're young, love is, I feel like I can say it's more of an infatuation. And then as you grow up, and as you grow older and you mature and you meet the right people and things like that, like, love is a whole different thing. I am the most in love with my boyfriend in Dune, more than I've ever been. And we just have a very loving, mature, unconditional type of love relationship. And I love him very much. Aww. He's probably gonna be blushing while he watches this video. Oh my God. Assumption. You hate cooking. The whole concept of cooking taking a very long time and having to wait for your food, I hate that. But there are times where I enjoy cooking and trying new things. I know I said earlier that I can't cook. I, I can only really cook the basics like a sandwich or scrambled eggs or pasta. Like those are the basic things that I know. I can't cook like Tamil food. I hope I can cook Tamil food one day because I love Tamil food. But yeah, like I can't cook really intricate dishes and things like that. But yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say I hate cooking, but I hate how long it takes because you gotta wait for your food and you know, like your girl's always hungry. You are not really close with your family and you are more of a friends over family type of person. I would have said this assumption is true five, 10 years ago maybe within that time range. Now I am very, very close with my siblings. We bark at each other and fight like crazy, but I love them with all my heart and my parents too. And honestly, maybe some of you guys can relate to me. Growing up, the reason I feel like I was very, very close to my friends over family is because I am the middle child so growing up I always felt neglected the attention that I was seeking from my family from my parents because middle child syndrome was so like you know it was such a thing in my house I went and seek that attention from my friends you know with my sister getting married and like all my other cousins and everyone getting married like I think I slowly started becoming very very close with my family and I love them I love both my family and friends but I've come to a point to realize and take it as a tip I think it's really important to value the relationships in your life whether they're your parents siblings you know if you were to lose them one day it would really badly affect you like you need to value those relationships and you need to put time and effort and everything into it because you don't want to get to that point in your life where you're like damn I wish I did it differently now I'm I'm close to both friends and family so I'm just gonna do a one more assumption and I'm gonna wrap up this video because I'm so tired my back's hurting and everything but I found this one really really funny somebody assumed that me and Nadoon have a very calm relationship calm <laughs> no we don't have a very calm relationship it's really funny because I'm a very loud person and Nadoon's a very calm person he's very quiet so I think people maybe because of the, how they see him they think we have a calm relationship and don't get me wrong we love each other we're there for each other and we want to be with each other but our relationship is like <laughs> it's up and down all the time in the sense that we fight like cat and dog all the time but at the same time we love each other and we have great times with each other all the time too. It's far from calm for sure, but I think that every relationship has its ups and downs. And honestly, when you're on social media, every single person is just really only gonna post the best parts of their lives. They don't always post the sad things or like the negative things or anything like that. Like that's the thing about, that's the sad thing about social media nowadays. It's like you see what you see and you judge based on what you see. We're very, very happy and very much in love. And we very much wanna spend the rest of our lives together. But just like every Every normal relationship we have our ups and downs and it is far from calm but to be honest if I'm being completely completely honest with you I would rather it this way with ups and downs that's how you grow that's how you grow as a person that's how you grow in a relationship and that's how you make your relationship stronger well so that is it guys thank you so much for sending in those assumptions they were so fun to read through I hope you guys really enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate it if you can leave a comment down below with whether it's your feedback or any other suggestions for any videos you want to see me create I have so much time on my hands now. I'm just like on a roll. I shot like four videos today. It's crazy. I'd like to do more. So yeah, like let me know what you guys want to see and I'll be sure to get it out. And yeah, I'm like so tired. I need to get going. But until my next video, I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.